I want to quickly, um, people are asking me about the video of Siyam, those who cannot fast, those who are there, men there, and cannot make it up. Nowadays, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so people are asking about the amount of filia this year in the United States. The scholars say that uh, the filia is the feeding of one poor person for every day that you do not fast. So it is a feeding, it is food that you are supposed to give. This is the original rule. Then they disagree on the minimum amount of food that you are supposed to Give to the poor. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The more you give, the better it is for you. But some people want to know what is the minimum that is uh, that they're supposed uh, to give. If you cannot invite somebody, a physical person, a poor person, to your house and feed him or send him physical food where he lives, then you are supposed to give him the stable food of the place or the country that you are in rice, wheat, barley, dates, whatever the stable food in the place that you live in. The amount again, some say it is one sa'a, which is about two and a half kilograms. Some say it is a month, and the amount is one quarter uh, of that. The minimum amount is 600 grams, and the max, maximum is two and a half kilograms. Again, there are differences among the uh, discourse as to what it is. Now, can you give it money instead of food? The vast majority of scholars say no. It has to be given in food, actual rice, actual wheat. Okay? Uh, the Ahnaf say if there is a need for it, and Allah Wa'ala, this is the correct opinion, because nowadays if you give somebody a couple of pounds of wheat, most likely he's going to give it to the bears outside rather than grind it and then cook it. And, you know, it's going to cost him more money to do that rather than get wheat or get bread that is that is ready. So Allah wa and you could give uh, uh, money instead of giving food. How much? Depending on the category that you go by, I would say that the minimum is about five or six dollars in this country. The minimum that you can give as a video for Sriam is five dollars, maybe six dollars. If you want to give ten, you know that is fine. That is different from Salak al Fitr at the end of Ramadan. That should be around ten dollars. Okay. Can you send it to another country? Again, the vast majority of the scholars say you're supposed to give it in the place that you are in, to the poor people in the place that you are in. Again, there is an opinion that says a minority opinion that says you could send it somewhere else if there is any and Wallahu Alam, it is better to send it back home because there is more need over there and more poor people than here. If you send it, let's say you want to send it to Morocco, should you estimate the amount of money that you give if you are giving money based on the standards of the United States or Morocco? It, is, uh, 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 it should be based on the area that you are in, not the area that you are sending it to. So if it is $6 here, it means you send to Morocco six dollars for every day that you want, that you uh, are unable to uh, uh, to fast. These are some of the rules put there about the figure. This is for people who cannot make it up. If you can make it up, it is not good to. It's not acceptable to pay the figure. But you have to fast once Ramadan is over and once you gain health and ability to fast again. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept our prayer. عند أول قيام هذا الله سبحانه وتعالى وتعالى أعلم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم I would uh, uh, go on uh, with what I started about some questions and some issues that people uh, ask about the month of Ramadan. 
regarding the video, you can give it to one person if you want to, or you can give it to more than one person, depending on what you think is best for them. Personally, I don't think that six dollars or seven dollars are going to be much, you know, to a person. If you give them a hundred dollars, it might make, you know, some uh, some difference. Can you consider an iftar at the masjid here, the equivalent, or uh, waves away your salat uh, al-fitr? I don't think so. Simply because you cannot guarantee that among the people who ate, there were 30 people who were meat. The fidya has to be given specifically, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fidya tumta'ala miskeen, miskeen. Meaning, he has to be poor. So if you can give a far to a miskeen, that's fine. 30 miskeens, that's fine. 30 miskeens and 200 people who are not miskeen, or average or rich, that's fine. But you have at least to guarantee the existence of 30 miskeens in order to live uh, uh, to the figure. By the way, the figure I gave you, the five or six dollars is the minimum. Because like I told you, there are others who say that it is two and a half kilograms or three kilograms. And that will make it like ten dollars or twelve dollars. Right. So the minimum is five or six dollars. The maximum could be ten or twelve dollars. Uh, Second issue. There is a difference between if you eat or drink by mistake, forgetfully, in that case, the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever eats or drinks forgetful, then it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has fitted, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given him drink. Your siyam is okay, you do not need to do anything. But that is different from, if you think that it is still time for iftar, and you eat and then you discover that you are one hour late, that you should have stopped an hour ago. This is not eating forgetful or drinking forgetful. This is miscalculating the time. What should you do? You wake up, you think that it's still five, you eat, you drink your sahur, then you discover it is six or seven. That you ate while it is daytime. What should you do? First, well, your siyam is invalid. You have to redo that day. But does th that does not mean that you are allowed to eat and drink. Okay. Here the point I want to emphasize. Some people think that if their siyam is invalid, that gives them the right to eat and drink because they have to redo it anyways. That is not true. If your siyam is invalid, you're supposed to continue siyam. It is haram to eat during the day of Ramadan. This is the rule. It is haram for any Muslim who, has, who is able and who is of age and sane. It is haram for him or her to eat during the day of Ramadan without an excuse. So if you discover that it is 7 o'clock, that you miscalculated, that your siyam is invalid, continue to fast until the end of the day and then redo another day after the month of Ramadan. But do not eat. If you, if you eat, then you fall under a different category. Those are the ones who deliberately broke their fast in Ramadan, and that, has, that is a big sin, and it has you know, different, uh, different rulings. The travel. The niyyah of travel alone is not enough for you to make you eligible for eating and drinking. The actual travel is. So if you have a plane that is leaving at 2 in the afternoon, and you intend to travel, and you bought the ticket, you cannot eat your breakfast at 8 o'clock. Why? Because you're not traveling. You're still at your home. You cannot eat at 1. You cannot eat even at 2. When do you eat? When you are in the plane and you are gone. After that, start eating and drinking. That's fine. Because that is the definition of a musaf, a traveler. The queen of musaf is the one who already away from his, you know, from his uh, home. What is the distance? There is a big difference among the scores, but the easiest way is to go by the opinion that says 50 miles or more. That way you are safe if you travel 50 miles one way. If you are a, a cab driver and you drive 200 miles, but within 10 miles of your home, you should not consider that travel. But if you travel 50 miles one way or more one way, then that gives you the other or the excuse to uh, uh, break your fast. Somebody asked me uh, uh, about the 
طائمه في الجمعه وذر ات از ضحى اور ون نوت ذا جمهور اوف ذا علماء سي ذات از ذا سيم تايم از لورد بالحنابله اي ثوت اس ذا شافعي اتس اكشلي حنبلي احمد بن حنبل سي ذات ات از فروم ذا تايم اوف ضحى ذات مينز يو كان سي صلاه الجمعه اكوردنج تو امام احمد بن حنبل ات 10 كلوك اور 11 كلوك ان ذا مورنينج Can you do more than one Jum'ah in a masjid? If there is one masjid, if there is a need to do so, that's fine. But if there is no need, it should not. Actually, the Jum'ah is supposed to be done in one place in every time. That is the way how Jum'ah was done at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Everybody came to a masjid in Nebuchadnezzar, in Medina. They did not have any Jum'ah anywhere in Medina except in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. As Muslims, you know, the number grew more. It was difficult for people to travel from one place to one masjid. The scholars started talking about Arab Jum'ah in, in more than one masjid in a time. But there at one time was three million, four million people. And it was the capital of the Islamic capital. You cannot gather all of these people in one, you know, in one place. Uh, but in the same masjid, like our masjid here, can you do two Jum'ahs or more? than that, the original rule is done. But if there is a need for such a thing, like for example, uh, uh, it's not convenient for people to do it, most people to do it at a certain time, okay? Then it's okay, as long as it does not, of course, cause any problems or splits uh, amongst, uh, among the Muslims. But those are quickly some of the questions that I've been asked, or I was asked in the last two or three days. If anybody has, uh, uh, Quick question right now, we can take quickly one or two questions. Whether about Ramadan, Siyam, or other things. Anybody uh, perhaps have a question? Yes. You, you said the, the Jumu'ah prayer is, can, be, can start from the du'a, from 10 o'clock? According to Imam Ahmed, yes. According to Imam Ahmed. It's not the whole prayer. It's not the whole time. I told you, the Jumu'ah, the, the majority of Malik and Abu Hanifa and Shafi'i say it's the same time as the whole. Ahmed bin Hanbal says it starts at the Abu'a. And he has his evidence. He has some hadith from the Prophet. Yes? Does hijama break your fat? No? Hijama. Hijama, there is a hadith that says, Asqar al Hajimu wal Mahjum. Okay? The Prophet said, Those who extract blood, it's a medical procedure that people used to do in the past. Uh, thinking that there is good blood and bad blood, and they release the bad blood because it's usually dark. Okay, so they re release it from the forehead or the back, and until it's over, and, and red blood starts coming, they think they have rid themselves of bad blood. Okay, and they feel relaxed uh, after. Allah, and that's medically, uh, maybe it is uh, those people who have high blood pressure. And when their blood, the amount of the blood in the body becomes less, they relieve themselves of blood pressure, and that is why, you know, they, they feel relieved. Do anything. But it was a very common procedure at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So he said in the hadith, after al hajimu wal mahjum, both the one who does it and the one who is it is practiced on have lost their sin. However, there is another hadith that says that the Prophet ﷺ that he Perform uh, hijama while he is uh, uh, he was fasting. So some say it causes you to lose. Some say it doesn't. Wallah ba'alam it does not. Wallah ba'alam that the prophet the, the hadith the hijam has two more powerful points. Or the hadith that says it uh, spoils your fasting. First, it came after, and we know in the science of hadith, if the hadith comes later, it cancels the hukum. In the first one. Second, it's it's about an action, and an action is stronger than words. The first hadith says he said such and such. The second hadith says he did, and the action is more emphatic than words. So Allah, Allah the correct opinion is that hijama does not spoil your uh, your fast. The Shia says that the uh, regarding the Salat al Jumu'ah, the uh, correct opinion to him is the opinion of the Jumu'ah, the majority of uh, the scholars. And that is, it is the time, same time as the not the opinion of Imam. 
Five other more questions? One of quickly, yes. Yes, uh, one more question about one of the Qira'a that she was uh, reading. Uh, I found some people that are confused about it. We all discuss it. Those also. are different Qira'as of the Quran. Yeah, some people don't understand that. So. That's fine. It's, it's good that they know that there are different ways of reading the Quran. Okay, and they should not uh, think that it is one standard way. Yes, brother. Somebody, when you already take the meditations before fast, can you take this meditation during fast? You cannot take anything when you are fasting through your fast. Anything that you take. Is important. That's what I'm telling you. You cannot take any medication through the mouth, even if it is not food, even if it's to swallow a stone. If you swallow a stone through your mouth, then you have spoiled your fasting. But if you're talking about injections like insulin, for example, Insulin is not taken through the mouth. Second, it's not considered food. Uh, same thing if you go to the dentist and he gives you anesthesia. That does not spoil your fasting as well. Because that is not food and it did not go through a natural opening to uh, the stomach. Well, well, I know you might have other questions, inshallah, and the other days we can address others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 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 Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.